Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So today we will attempt to repair this mobile phone. Uh, and what's wrong with it? The USB connector is totally busted. And no, it's not my phone. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I don't know how this happened, but I promised to see if I could repair it, so we will attempt to do that. I already opened this and uh, found out which connector I should order. And I got three of these for eight bucks or something, I think. Um, it's a Motorola Moto E, I believe it's called. And I found the connectors on eBay. Uh, that's why I could get them cheapest with the shipping and all. Uh, and I just wanted to verify that it indeed was the correct one. And as far as I could see, it would fit. So let's start by peeling off the back cover. So, there's just a whole bunch of screws around the edge to undo here. Hmm. I could have sworn I used a Torx 5 last time. Hmm. Well, the Torx 4 was a bit loose and I found another 5 here that seems to fit. So, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe where I got this screwdriver has something to say about it. Hmm. I don't know. At least I found one that fits. So. I would recommend if you take something like this apart, that you put the screws down like you take them out of the device, just like I'm doing here. That way you don't lose track of where the screws should go. Uh, now I know with this one, because I did take it apart before that all the screws are identical, so there's nothing to worry about really, but you don't really know until you've taken them all out if one should be of another type. So this is held together both with a plastic clips and with screws. So there's a little battery connector there that we need to take care of. And this one lifts uh, up this way. It doesn't uh, slide that way. Uh, that's very common in mobile phones that the connectors need to you know, lift up. Um, so we can put that aside. And to take the board out, we'll need to undo these screws as well. And these connectors for the LCD and touchscreen, I believe it is, we need to unplug those also. And they are also a little different from time to time, these connectors. Uh, these have uh, two hinges. Here, so you can flip this whole part like that, and now you can pull the cable out this way. Some of them you have to pull, like they slide into the connector instead. Uh, that's a little different, but you can see it uh, if you look closely. Uh, you can see the hinges uh, if it is this type. And we have some tape on top of this one. It'll probably come out with the connector, or maybe not.
show. And this is uh, rubber around the connector. And there we have it. And as you can see it looks like it's going to fit. Uh, it's the first time I see it in real life actually. The other one I just had this one on the picture when I ordered it so I still wasn't 100% sure. I think we'll have to peel off this gasket uh, that's around here uh, when we have to desolder it. But so to desolder the old connector I think I'll use a solder wick and a regular solder iron because I could use hot air but there's all these tiny springs and components around here that could easily get blown off by the air. So I think it's safer to use this method. Well, I couldn't get that to work because uh, the through holes for the uh, the legs out here they are so tight that uh, the solder in between the the pin and the hole can't be pulled out by the solder wick. So I'll have to use the hot air. But I think <clears throat> before I'll do that, I'll just uh, run a blob of solder across all the uh, pins for the connector here. So so that they will all get heated up at the same time so that when I pull the connector off uh, it's not like one of them is still soldered and we will lift the pad off the PCB so that's the plan anyway <laughs> So I got the old connector off and now we can gently clean up the pads and stuff with the solder wick. I also accidentally bumped this spring here when I heated it with the with the hot air so we'll just have to make sure that that is still uh, in the correct spot. It doesn't look like it moved but, but I just have to check it. And it looks like the pins survived. And uh, getting the last part of solder out can be a little difficult, but just uh, regular flux and plenty of it and if it is really bad some fresh solder on top will usually help pull the old stuff out of the hole so let's see if the new one will fit 
There's a little bit left in that hole there. getting in. Uh, maybe it helps if you turn on the soldering iron. <laughs> So the reason why I turned it off was because I want to change to this tip. It's basically like a needle nose. <laughs> they aren't really good for anything except reaching into places like this. I don't really think you're supposed to change these when the iron is still this hot. But who has time for waiting? I don't. So just give it a little bit of flux. So that wasn't very easy, but uh, I got it soldered in place anyway. And uh, I had two of the pins shot together, and I couldn't really uh, get the solder bridge away. The way you do it usually is you just flood it with flux, and then you just uh, hold the tip of the soldering iron near it, and then it will suck the solder up onto the soldering iron. But it didn't really work out that well because. I couldn't really get to the pins, but I got it in the end, and uh, I just removed all the solder that I got onto the connector and what might be the microphone here. I don't hope I uh, damaged that too much uh, and got too much flux into it, but we'll see. Now I'll just uh, clean the board with some alcohol and then we can put it back together. I think this gasket got a little bit too much heat from the hot air gun. It's not really that important. I think it's just uh, supposed to keep the sound uh, where it belongs.
So it probably still won't turn on until we charge it, but let's give it a try. Nope. So, I guess there's only one thing left to do. Mm. That new connector is uh, is very tight, but let's turn it on. Uh, nothing exploded, and we do actually have a light up here. Still doesn't turn on, but uh, the battery is totally dead, so that's kind of expected, <coughs> I hope. Oops, see what just happened there? <laughs> yeah, anyway, you saw it. It is indeed working again, but um, I don't really know that uh, little metal part that I got some solder onto. If that is the microphone, then, you know, I might have destroyed that. <laughs> but I'll just let it charge and I'll test it. So I'll let it sit for half an hour and then uh, we'll get back. So I'll just uh, try and... Uh, call my phone here so we can see if the microphone still works. So I just let it look so we can see if there's any distortion in the sound. I just uh, played back the footage on the camera here and it, it seems like uh, it's working okay. I'll have to test it further tomorrow where I can get uh, someone to talk in this phone. But it uh, doesn't seem like I destroyed anything. So at least we got the USB connector replaced so we can now charge the phone. And uh, I'll just have to put in the rest of the screws. I just put in four. Uh, and yep, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it, even though it was just a simple repair job of a more a mechanical part than a <laughs> electronics, but at least maybe you learned how not to do it. You know, I was just uh, fooling around in there. And I'm sure if, if you're used to repair phones, you're probably laughing at me, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's not really my uh, specialty. The only work that I've done on phones so far is actually change the battery in my old iPhone and also change the home button in that one and now replace a USB connector in a Motorola. But as long as we get the job done, we probably did something right. Right? <laughs> See ya!